No pattern, no plan, no expectation of perfection, using what I already have. This is like the least accurate way to do sewing ever. Yet to see anyone on the Great British Sewing Bee using baked beans, but I'm sure the day will come. Embrace the wonkiness. Hello, today I am going to make some dodgy bags. If you don't know what dodgy bags are, they are just hand sewn, handmade bags. I just happen to call all of mine a bit dodgy because I'm not an expert sewer by any means. Uh, and the name kind of stuck. And for the fourth year running, myself and Claudia of the Crochet Luna podcast are running the Dodgy Bag Mal 2022. So I really want to make some bags, or a bag at least, for that make-along. I have got very little time to do it, so I thought it'd be interesting to film how I go about doing it with no pattern, no plan, no expectation of perfection, using what I already have, and on a day when I've already got loads to do. I'm actually, it's a Thursday today, so I'm not um, in my day job. It's about, well, it is eight o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm about to take my youngest daughter um, halfway down to school. She's walking half the way by herself at the moment. My eldest daughter is just coming in. So she's just coming in to get her lunch because she's about to head off. I look really bright. Why do I look so bright? Oh, it, it's, it's not unflattering. Make sure you say goodbye before you go. Hello. Yeah, so it's eight o'clock in the morning. It's all go. I've actually got to film my knitting and crochet podcast today and go to the post office and do the usual household chores. But I'm going to try and fit in making at least one, maybe two or three bags using what I have. So I thought I would share how I go about doing that on a busy day with no plan. So I know I need to make three project bags and I have some pre-cut, which I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you in a minute. So the next most important thing is time. How much time do I have? Never enough. Never, never, never enough, never, never. Never enough time. So I break it down into three sort of sections. The first is decisions, which we're gonna do now. I've sort of allowed, I don't wanna rush any part of the process because it's supposed to be good fun and I wanna enjoy it and I wanna like what I end up making. So I'm gonna allow myself a good half hour after the school run to make some decisions about what I'm gonna to make today, what fabric I'm gonna use um, and you know get all that together. Next stage is a bit longer, maybe 45 minutes to an hour to allow for measuring, cutting and ironing. So the, the important thing is not to rush this. You're going to be doing a lot of measuring and it's important to, you know, what's the old saying? Measure twice, cut once. You want to get it properly done. So you need to allow yourself a bit of time to lay it out, iron it flat, work out what size you're going to be making and give it a proper measurement and cut. So it's, it's great for the next stage of sewing. So I'm going to give myself 45 minutes um, to an hour to do that before I start filming my podcast. Then I'm going to go and film my podcast and come back down and give myself time over the rest of the day and into the evening to sew them together, which is the third stage, which is probably the easiest bit because you've done all the brain work, you've done the decision making, you've done the measuring, you've done the cutting, now you're just piecing it together like a, a jigsaw. So depending on how many mistakes I make, it could be 45 minutes to three hours. Let's just say goodbye to Lilia. Have a lovely day. I will. Bye vlog. <laughs> Have a lovely day. I will. Bye. Um, yes, I'm going to, depending on how many mistakes I make, the sewing part could be really quick or frustratingly long. Uh, but I'm aiming for about sort of 90 minutes to get things sewn, sewn together. And that might happen today or depending on how the filming of my podcast goes and everything else, it might end up happening on Saturday. So let's get started. Cat sleeping on your kitchen table, optional. For anyone who's not aware, I don't have a cat. It's a long story. This is my pile of pre-cut things. Now I must have gone through a phase of thinking, right, let's use up every last bit of this bit of fabric and just make a bag. And this is the result of that. So some of them are ready to go, some of them they all need ironing. Some of them need linings cut and maybe interfacing. So I'm just gonna show you what I've got. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just use this pile 
to go through, but that isn't going to really tell you much about measurement. So I'm going to use, where is it, my daughter's ruler, Tati Divine Girl's Rule, very glittery, to tell you the measurements of the different things. And I have done all of these bags, so let's look at the first one. Okay, so I've basically cut out two strips of old jeans and two strips of some organic fabric that I've had for about a billion years. So they both measure, are we going to do it in inches or centimetres? Let's go inches. 11 inches across and then the bottom, because I'm going to do a box bottom for this, so I want it to be a bit um, bigger than the top bit. The bottom is five inches, so the bottom is five by 11 and the top is just over four inches by 11, but it doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is sew these together so that I'll have two panels that kind of look like that. And I'll show you what I do in that process. So this is going to be one of the bags I make. However, I am going to need to cut some lining, which is kind of handy because then I can show you what I do. I've also got here some drawstrings that have not only been already cut, but they've already been sewn together as well. So that's handy. So I just need to find some drawstrings. And I've got two little handly bits that I've made out of the same fabric. So I'm gonna sew those in as well. So that is one that's gonna get made, hopefully. But it needs lining and it's definitely gonna need some interfacing. Now I've got a whole load of interfacing that needs using as well. So that's going. what type of interfacing I use depends on what I've got and how much I've got of it. So that's bag number one. Then we've got a Christmassy one. This is obviously being cut thinking of using a zip because of the size of it and everything. So I've got this lovely Robin fabric, which I think was from Hobbycraft. And I've already cut a nice, uh, just plain gray lining. So all this is gonna need is a decision about whether I wanna box the bottom. I probably don't. Um, what zip I'm gonna use and whether or not I want to add interfacing to it. We'll come to zips in a minute. So that's good. So now I've got a, a drawstring one to make and a zip one. So that'd be good. Oh, what's going on? This is an old one because it's got pins in it and I don't use pins anymore. Okay, so that could be a contender for working on today, but I'm going to have to do a bit of rummaging to find fabric to make straps. So maybe, let's put that in the maybe pile. We have two piles now, definitely a maybe. Okay, yeah, this is definitely really random. So I've got two bits of interfacing cut here, some lining fabric which is like this really cute little people holding hands. And then this old Ikea fabric. I suppose that could be a lining fabric. And the people holding hands could be the outer fabric. How do I feel? I'm not sure. I kind of like the people holding hands for the outer fabric. But that's all ready to go. And I think that will be a zipper pouch as well. So that, I think that's going to be a definite. So, oh, I didn't tell you the measurements, did I? So this little zipper pouch, the little Christmas one, both lining and outside is nine inches across and six inches deep so nine by six i'll put this all in the description box but work with what you've got doesn't really matter uh, and this one is 10 inches across eight inches deep and then i've got another one here that's exactly the same size so i've got my interfacing some yellow lining and that same old ikea fabric so that's going to be nice and easy to sew together. And I might even do like a completely contrasty zip, like a, a bright blue or a bright pink. But I've also got some more neutral colour. I've got beige, grey and bright yellow as well. What we, oh, and this is completely ready as well. Now, I think this is going to be another zipper bag. We've got a lot of zipper bags. I might make this a box bottom one day. So I've got this lovely floral black and white, I've got the interfacing cut out and then I've got this paisley print for the lining. It's a bit bigger than the other ones. That is 11 and a quarter inches, that's random, it must just be working with what I had, by nine and a quarter inches. So there's no rhyme or reason to the measurements, I just cut it out based on the fabric that I've got, what looks about right and we'll see how we go. We can always undo it if it goes wrong. So there we have it, we've got a whole pile. And then I've got this really random pile here. 
Um, I used to make these like properly years ago, over 10 years ago. They're little pouches that I put lavender in. This one's literally just needs stuffing and sewing. And then these ones just need sewing together. And they're so simple. I've just got little felt decorations on the front and then I just stuff them with lavender. So I might try and sew a few of these together, but that might not happen today because they're not bags, so they don't count towards the mouth. And then these, I think I was gonna make, I'll have to go back and try and find the pattern. I used to make these really cool little box pouches. Here's one that I keep in my bedside table. It's really random fabric, some organic cotton and just a random lining. This is what I use to just house some really random things. Uh, for my lips and Vaseline, pens to write my diary, and a random strawberry shortcake doll from my childhood. Um, but as you can see, they are kind of boxed like that. It's really cool. I can't remember how to do it though, but I've obviously started with this one and this one. The zips are in and everything, so I only need to sew the side bit, so I obviously got stuck. So I'll see if I can look up the pattern for that, and even if I don't sew it together, I'll link the pattern underneath. Now I like to do my cutting out and working out on my dodgy old ironing board. So I'm gonna start with one of the easier ones that I've got all the pieces cut out for. It's gonna have a box bottom so I can show you what I do for that. I have shown this in previous tutorials as well, but it's always good to see how you can use it in different ways. And it's been stored flat, so actually it doesn't even need that much of an iron. So I'm just gonna very lightly go over it to make sure it's nice and flat ready for sewing. That's the lining. I'm ironing the two pieces together, by the way. Make it a bit quicker. So this is gonna be the outside of the bag. So. When I'm deciding what colour I want to use for the zip and so on, this is the, the piece of fabric I want to compare it to. So I've got some options. I'm going to need uh, to choose my zip colour. So I've got these. I really like the pink. I also really like the yellow. In fact, I really love the yellow. So I don't really want to go for any of these plain neutral colours. And I don't like the blue as much. So it's going to be between these two. And then I'm going to need some uh, contrasty fabric to make some little tabs for the end of the zip. Now you don't have to do this when you're sewing in a zip, but it really does make it look really nice. So I've got this random yellow. It is a different yellow to that zip though. I wonder if I've got anything else. So let's say I wanted to go for that yellow, because I do like that. Uh, I've got some blue lobster fabric which might be quite fun or I've just got some neutral grey or some dark green oh, I quite like the dark green right let's go for that then who knows how it's going to end up looking so what I'm going to do now is measure uh, where I want the zip to be and also make the tabs for the zip disclaimer I am in no way an expert sewer or anything like this this is just how I've worked out what to do <laughs> So there's probably better ways of doing it out there, but this is just what I do. So I'm gonna cut quite close to the, the little metal bit. See the little metal bit at the end there? I'm just gonna cut quite close to that. That's what holds the zip together, but I don't want all that excess fabric. And I'm gonna place it so it's about, I don't know, a couple of centimeters in from the edge. And I'm going to pull the zip pull in and I've got these clips here that I'm just going to clip the edge just to keep it steady and I'm going to cut the zip I'm just doing this all by eye so I'm not measuring anything just making it up as I go along be brave so I've got a kind of equal size space sort of finger width for either side and now what I want to do is cover these sort of raw edges so that they don't show when the bag's finished. So I've just cut a random bit of my khaki green. I'm just going to iron it because it's got a bit of a, a fold in it. Okay, so we're not going to worry too much about the width across as long as it's wider than your zip at the moment. So I'm going to fold over one raw edge 
and iron it and then I'm going to fold it over again give it a good press so you've hidden that raw edge by folding it and folding it again I'm going to place it about there so we've got my folded edge here and what I want to do is when I fold that edge over I want to make sure that it comes past that bit of metal because when I sew a seam along this edge I don't want to hit that metal it will break my needle <laughs> it won't be good so you want to make sure you leave a good gap and encase it in there about there and i'm gonna iron it so i've got the crease now again i'm kind of just going to guess how much fabric i need to fold it over double again and just cut that off doesn't need to be entirely accurate we're not on the sewing bee we're not going to be winning any awards right, and I'm going to fold that um, other raw edge over twice as well right, so I'm going to fold these two raw edges together just to double check that that crease I put in is definitely in the middle it's not so I'm going to iron it all again make sure it all sits nicely so here we are you've got your two double folded edges meeting and it's all folded over like that so now we can encase the zip you want to push it right up to that folded edge as far as you can and then bring those two folded uh, two edges to meet here and I like to use these clips I find them so much easier and clip everything into place okay and we're going to do the same at the other side which is a little harder because you have to at the same time try to pinch these two bits together it's it's tricky but it's not impossible don't worry about the overhanging bits here we'll deal with those after we've sewn it all in so I'm going to do the other side and I'm going to do the same in preparing the other zipped bags and then I'll come back to you Christmas Robin bag which is going to be a zipper I think I'm just going to oh no that's too contrasty hang on mm, maybe no or well, maybe we'll stick with the cream yeah we're going to stick with the cream and do the khaki dark green tabs uh, but it needs some um, interfacing because it'll be a bit too floppy um, without and I am running out of interfacing but I have a lot of this squidgy batting to use and seeing as this is going to be quite a small pouch and I'm not going to be doing a box bottom I think I'm going to use the squidgy batting <laughs> so this is going to be a bit trial and error I'm going to lay one of my outer pieces just on top like that and I'm just going to cut around it and hope for the best and then I'm sure I'm going to get in a right old mess when I sew it but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it Oops. I'm sure there are lots of other people out there on YouTube doing this properly but maybe they don't have to go to the post office and film a podcast and do the school run in the next uh, in the same day there you go, so it's going to be really nice and squidgy, looking forward to that. So I'm going to do another one now. There, so I've got my squidgy lining now cut out. I'm going to cut my tabs for the zip and get that all ready to go. Ooh. Oops, 
really a disaster. Okay, so this is my drawstring one. Now, fortunately, the trickiest part, or the most fiddly part, the drawstrings are already done. So I don't need to do this, but it's basically, I just cut a piece of fabric that is the same uh, width as my uh, bag fabric. And then I fold it uh, double on each side and stitch it and then just need it, these are quite big actually, but you just need it big enough for a drawstring and a bit of a seam allowance. These have been cut a little bit shorter than I would cut them normally, but that's fine, we're working with what we've got. So for this one I've got another stage of sewing to do first. I need to sew the bottom parts of my bag to the top parts of my bag. Uh, so the organic purple doesn't actually have a right or wrong side. Uh, but I'm going to put them right sides together like that and clip them and then I'm going to just sew those together with quite a small seam allowance and then after I've done that only then will I know um, what the what lining size I'm going to cut because until it's sewn together I won't be able to measure it properly because I'm not doing this with any particular plan I haven't actually even decided what seam I'm going to sew here which is why I usually use about a quarter of an inch. I also found another random one that's been cut out. Uh, I've obviously been trying to use up all the scraps of fabric. So I've got this uh, lovely red uh, fabric with sort of polka dot white hearts. This is going to be the outer fabric. And I've just got a random Ikea fabric for the lining, which really doesn't go, but who cares? I'm going to just iron it so it's ready to go. And if I end up making that today or Saturday, I'll let you know. Right, it is about quarter to one now. I've filmed my podcast and moved all my files onto my computer to start editing in the next couple of days. I've been to the post office, I've been shopping, I've run a couple of errands and I've hoovered downstairs as well. well I haven't hoovered in here because I'm about to make a mess, but I will hoover afterwards. Uh, you will notice that I am filming this in my kitchen. Uh, so I've got, and I sew at my table, at my kitchen table. So I've got about an hour and a half before I have to think about going to get my youngest daughter from school, but I'm only gonna sew for the next hour because I need to allow myself plenty of time to tidy up because I can't just leave it all out um, for the after school rush and dinner and everything. And that is the disadvantage of not having your own craft space. So I've got that um, to contend with as well. But what I'll do is I'll do as much sewing as I possibly can, tidy it away and pick it up again on Saturday. I had a bit of a search and I found out that the box pattern I was talking about was actually a pattern uh, which I'll link the video underneath by Melanie Ham, who we uh, the crafting community lost um, this year or last year. Uh, she very sadly died and uh, her videos still live on though, teaching so many of us um, all the tricks of sewing and I even made my face mask at the beginning of the pandemic using her tutorials. So I will link that underneath, um, definitely worth checking out all of her videos. Right, let's get sewing. <laughs> I've sewn together my pieces and I'm going to open it out like this. This will be the right side. But I'm going to start by ironing the wrong side. Now because I'm using denim, which is much heavier than this very thin uh, organic cotton, I'm going to sew, uh, I'm going to, sorry, iron uh, the denim piece flat rather than flipping it and ironing the top piece flat, just because it will mean there's less of a bulk. Um, across that seam there which will make things a bit easier when we come to sew the two um, panels together okay and I'm going to flip it over and iron it on the front as well now you could at this stage do a bit of top stitching along that join 
So you could do so, like either some contrasting top stitching along here or, you know, uh, purple or whatever. I'm not going to do that because obviously time is of the essence for me. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. Got my sparkly ruler again. So my completed panels now measure eight and a half inches high and well obviously that hasn't changed 11 inches across and i've got this valine heavy uh, interfacing which i get from john lewis here in the uk let me show you it's a sew-in interfacing so you don't uh you don't iron it on there we go you can get it on eBay and Amazon and stuff as well. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on here because it's quite grippy interfacing. I'm going to lay my panel onto the interfacing like that. I'm matching it up in the corners so that I don't have to cut those bits because that's already done. I'm literally just going to cut around. I'm, I'm quite confident that my, my fabric's not going to move whilst I do this because it the uh, interfacing, like I say, is lovely and grippy. So I'm just going to cut around like that. And what interfacing does is just give the bag a bit of structure and the contents a little bit of extra protection. And I think it just makes the whole thing just look a bit neater. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. Okay that's done so now I can sew my oh I need to cut lining as well oh I nearly forgot right let's find some nice plain lining fabric okay what I've got here is actually some old school shirts from of the kids I cut off all the bits that might have damage or stains or whatever and I keep all the the fresh white cotton fabric and it's ideal for lining fabric and it's a good way to use up something that would otherwise probably not be able to get reused because I don't know about you if your kids wear white school shirts like the underarms can get quite stained and so on um, so you can't really pass them on to the charity shop my mum used to cut them up as dusters but I've got enough dusters <laughs> so bag lining it is and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to place my fabric and the lining because it's nice and like I say the interfacing sorry is nice and grippy and it will help it all stay put. Line it up. This is like the least accurate way to do sewing ever. <laughs> and I'm just going to cut around it. Professionals would have a cutting board and a rotary cutter and they'd be going uh, over really precisely and neatly I'm sure so I just reiterate again that there are many people out there on YouTube doing this a lot better than me this is just me showing you how I get to sew a bag without worrying too much about it uh, which means I end up with a lovely bag I've had a nice afternoon of sewing I get a sense of accomplishment um, at what I've done and that's good for my mental health I recommend it. Let go of perfection. Of course, if you are worried about it all moving about whilst you're cutting, you could use my other uh, <laughs> unprofessional trick. <laughs> other brands are available. And just use baked beans or any other canned good that you fancy or that you have lying around as weights. Now just keep everything in one place whilst you do your cutting. Yet to see anyone on the Great British Sewing Bee using baked beans, but I'm sure the day will come. Okie dokie. Now we're going to clip things together to sew them together. So I'm going to take my two outer pieces and the interfacing. I'm just going to move the, to the white lining to one side for a minute. Let's move it a bit closer. One interfacing on the bottom and one of my outer fabrics there. And I'm going to take my other outer fabric and put it right sides together onto the top. And I'm going to first make sure that the 
seams match up here so that when I sew it together the purple runs into the purple and the denim runs into the denim if that makes sense. I'm going to put a clip there straight away and I'm then going to add on my interfacing. There we go. Turn it round. I'm going to do the same on this side, make sure that those fabrics meet up at the seam. And then I will add in my interfacing. Okay. I'm just going to put a couple of clips along the bottom. Like that. So that's ready to sew. I'm not going to sew the top because obviously that's the opening. I'm just going to sew down this down one side along the bottom and up the other side and then for my very wonkily cut lining <laughs> I'm going to just clip this together as well and then using the same seam allowance as I do for the outer bit I'm going to sew down one side and then I'm going to sew to this clip and I'm going to fasten it off by going backwards forwards I'm going to cut my thread and come back here so that I leave a gap and that is for turning out the bag when I'm finished. Now I'm going to go all the way along and up the other side and then we're going to come back, add the drawstrings and finish the bag. Oh, hang on a minute. I said I'd probably forget this, didn't I? I forgot. I've got these little uh, handles that I've made out of excess fabric uh, and I need to pop the, these on at this stage as well. So I'm going to Fold this in a loop and let's have a look. I want this, I think, to be uh, just above the join. Oops, so I'm going to sandwich it inwards. So the loop is inside my sandwich of fabrics. So I'm going to do it just above that seam and clip it in the middle. There we go. And then I've got this little one as well. And seeing as I've got it, I might as well use it. So I'm going to put this one, where should I put this one? On the other side, but in the denim, below below the seam. Oh, nearly did it the wrong way. So you sandwich the loop inside all the fabric, so you've just got the raw edge sticking out. And clip it in. Right, let's go and sew this together. It's all sewn together. I had a bit of a dodgy incident in that I noticed I had accidentally caught some of the uh, lining fabric and there was a small rip. So all I did was I increased the seam allowance to incorporate the rip so that it won't actually show, it will just be buried inside the seam of the bag and then I did the same on the outer bag so that they still match and are the same size. So before I go ahead and uh, pin all this together with the drawstrings and sew it together, I'm just going to go and turn it the right way out and I'm going to double check that I haven't sort of missed any seams or anything. So the lining's fine. It's usually on the outer fabric that I manage to like just not catch something. This is also if we find out where if I've matched the seams up correctly or not. <laughs> Probably not. It's not too bad. Uh, yeah, I've caught all the seams there. Caught all the seams there. Oh, that's a good match, isn't it? Look at that. Not bad at all. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut in a little box bottom. That'll just make it sit quite nicely. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to cut a square out of each of the corners. Uh, each of the corners of the outer fabric and each of the corners of the lining fabric as well and I'm literally just going to place it on the corner of my stitching and I think I'm going to have a three centimeter I know, oh hang on we've been working in inches but this is centimeters so I'm going to say a three centimeter square so I'm just going to mark three centimeters side and bottom then I am going to match it up like that and just draw with my biro. My biro doesn't want to draw on here. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. So I've got my little three centimeter square 
and I'm going to cut it out. Right. And I'm going to do the same on the other side of the bottom as well. So I'm going to measure from my seam three centimeters, three centimeters. Turn my set square the other way round. And then grab a clip. We are going to open it up. Make sure you get into the middle of the two outer fabrics there and bring the seam at the side and the seam at the bottom to meet like that and we're going to clip it ready to sew in a minute and I'll show you show you how I sew it in a sec so that's what it looks like I've clipped the side seam also the bottom seam against the side seam and I'm going to do the same with the hole I've cut on the other side and now I'm going to do the same with the lining fabric exactly the same process and exactly the same measurement my three centimeters and then I'm going to match the seams up and clip them together I'll come over to the sewing machine and I'm going to take my bag with the clips on that seam. I'm going to have to take my clip off. Get it under my foot. Hold it with my fingers now. And with about the same seam allowance, about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to come forward a bit and go back a bit to stop it unravelling until I'm just at the edge and then I'm going to go all the way across sewing those two seams together so I'm almost right at the very edge one more and then back to finish it off so I've sewn it together like that I'm going to do the same on the other side I'll go back to show you how that looks so here we are I'm going to turn it out and have a look at how that box bottom looks. Let's move the camera back a bit so you've got a bit of a bigger view. There we go. You see I've absolutely covered in thread, thread and fabric dust. A black t-shirt is not a good idea for sewing. So there we go. So that's how the box bottom now looks. That's where you've just sewn across along here. And uh, you can see, oh, I'm very pleased with that. The seams are perfectly matching. Well done me. It doesn't often happen. So that is the outer part of our bag and pretty much how our bag is going to look. But we've got to add the drawstrings. So with the right side facing me, I'm going to take my drawstrings, turn the drawstring upside down. So the raw edge is now matching with the raw edge of the top of the bag. I'm going to position it so it's nice and centre. And I'm going to clip it to one side of the outer fabric like that. Flip it round and do the same on the other side. Match up the, the raw edges and make sure that that's kind of matching the drawstring positioning on the other side as well. Now so with the right side out, you want your lining, which you've also done the box bottoming, you want that inside out so you can see all my raw edges are still exposed there. So when I put this, when we put the outer bag inside the lining like that, it means that the right sides are together. And the right sides are now all hidden inside with all the raw sides exposed inside and out. Now the first things we want to attach are the seams, the side seams. So the side seam of the lining against the side seam of the outer fabric matching 
the top raw edges. Clip that on each side. So do each side first, match the tops and the side seams. Like that. And give it a bit of a tidy up. And then all you have to do is very carefully match up the top of the fabric nice and neatly and move your clips that you've just added to hold the drawstring so that you are now sandwiching the drawstring casing in between the outer fabric and the lining fabric. Give it a bit of a pull and a stretch to make sure that that's going to sew nicely. I quite often get bunching fabric but that's all part of the the dodgy bag experience. <laughs> so there we go. That's our sandwich ready to go. And now all we're going to do is sew all the way around the top and then close it all in and then we will turn it out through that hole that we left in the lining. So to do this my machine actually has a bit that comes off so that I have like a a leg that sticks out and it means I can hook my bag over like that to go round and round. So that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to start, it doesn't really matter where you start as long as you end there at the same place. So with the same seam allowance I'm going to position my foot, I'm going to sew forwards, backwards and then off I go all the way around the edge. Okay, I'm nearly at the end, I'm just going to make sure that my lines meet up, so where I started is where I want to finish, there we go, and back to finish it off. Let's go and have a look. So pull it all out through that hole in the lining, the moment of truth, the most exciting part. Let's just double check that I've definitely got those drawstrings caught, like so. So I could have done them a bit lower down to be honest, but never mind. So now that I've checked it, that's you push the lining inside, and there we have it. There is our dodgy box bottom bag, and I am now going to give it a really good iron and find some drawstring to put in, and we've got our first bag finished. And it's only half past one. I've still got half an hour. Right, our next one's going to be a zipper bag. So this is a slightly different process. Oh, that's come unclipped. Let's clip that end back in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is sew the tabs to the zip. Then I'm going to show you how to clip the zip onto your fabric and sew it all together. So we're going to go and cross to the sewing machine and we're just going to do... Oh, we're just going to do a really narrow line of stitches right near the edge there and then I'm going to come back and show you how that looks and what I do next. So I'm back from the sewing machine and this is how it looks. So at each end I've got a really narrow seam along the top so the whole zip is now encased in this little tab. Oh the bottom's not as neat is it? And on both sides that is. Okay there we go. So the first thing we're going to do is attach it to the front fabric, which I've decided is going to be this uh, little people fabric. So I'm going to make sure that's the right way up. And I'm going to attach the lining as well. So I'm going to lay the lining down. Uh, sorry, the interface, not the lining. So I'm going to lay the interface down and my outer fabric. So that's facing up, the right side is facing up towards me. And then I'm going to flip my zip so it's right side down. And I'm going to make sure that my zip is slightly open. But we will need to move it as we go. Uh, but I like to make sure I start with it slightly open. And then not lining up the tabs with the top of the fabric, but lining up the zip itself, the edge of the zip with the top of the fabric. Get it positioned so it's in the middle. and clip that on. And then I'm going to take one of my lining pieces and I'm going to put, decide which way up that goes, 
don't think it really matters. So. I'm going to put that right side down on top of the zip. So I've now got a little sandwich with my lining fabric and my outer fabric right sides together and my zip is in the middle between it all and I'm just going to move my clips to incorporate that lining. Okay, now I'm going to go to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew from the very edge all the way to the very edge right across. Right, I'm going to have a bash at doing this with just my normal foot just because I'm a bit lazy so I'm just going to position my needle quite low down so I can feel yeah, I think I should be all right. I'm just going to do it for a quarter of an inch seam allowance and see how we get on. I'll go slowly, just in case. Forward and back to begin with. So I've just come up to the bit where the bump is, where my zip is. My needle is in the fabric, so it can't slip and slide the fabric can't slip and slide so I'm going to lift up my foot and I'm just going to reach in and it's a bit of a pain but I'm going to unzip it so it's now the lump is now past the bit I've sewn and I can happily keep going put my zipper down and slowly keep going I am finding because I'm not using a zipper foot I am having to go very steadily and hold it in place so that the my foot doesn't sort of slip off of the zip because half of it is kind of on the angle on top of my zip but the needle has got a good space away from the zip I mean I'm actually just gonna clip that bit of excess of the tabs that we put on the zip like that just so it's a bit neater okay so when we open it out you should see that your lining fabric is attached to the underside of your zip there and your outer fabric is attached and your interfacing is attached to the top of the fabric there and I'm quite pleased with that it's a little bit wonky but it's not too bad so we're now going to flip all of that to one side so it's all wrong sides together So I've got the zip at the top here, right side up. And I'm going to take my other piece of uh, outer fabric, which way round, doesn't really matter. And I'm going to line it up with the side of the zip, but also make sure that I'm lining it up with the sides of the uh, other outer fabric. It won't line up with the bottom because you've got to lift it slightly to match the edge of the zip. And I'm going to put my lining, uh, my interfacing on there as well. And then I'm going to clip that to the top to the zip. And then with the lining, I'm going to lay that face up like that. And I'm going to line up the top of the zip with the top of the lining and make sure again that the lining sides are matching up. It's a bit, it's a bit tricky at this stage because you've got a lot of fabric to contend with. But just try to make sure it's pretty much in the same place. And now I'm just going to move the clips to incorporate that lining. Then I'm going to go back to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew exactly the same way all the way down side to side and come back and show you how that looks okay so if you open it up <laughs> it's very wonky uh, but this is the outside so this is the top of the zip oh goodness me that is wonky never mind uh, and on the other side if you open it up you've got the lining which is also really wonky so now what we want to do is give it a really good iron right pull those um joins nice and flat and run the iron over them they don't have any folds in them. Get it all nice and flat for the next stage. And you know what? If it's wonky, so's mine. We're not making these to sell. Well, I'm certainly not. And we're not making them to win any prizes. 
We're doing this because it's fun and you might be able to give them as gifts or use them to keep your, your next sock project in or your cross stitch or whatever you want. Embrace the wonkiness. <laughs> okay, so we could box bottom this, uh, which would mean we would uh, cut some corners again. Uh, but I think I'm not going to do that. I think I'm just going to leave it. I, I might box bottom some of the other ones, but because I want to finish this before I go on the school run and I'm running out of time, I'm just going to sew it together and keep it as a plain non-box bottomed one. So what we do next is fold the outside fabrics together and the lining fabrics together. Or oh, I should say as well, make sure that the zip is open. Otherwise you won't be able to turn it round, uh, turn it the right way up. And then we're going to match up the edges there, the seams, and then match up the sides of the fabric. And do the same on the other side. So I'm just looking at where the main fabric is and making sure the tops of the main fabric are matching up. And I'm going to put a clip on the bottom just to keep me on the straight and narrow. I like to put two clips along the bottom of the lining to remind me that I've got to stop and leave a gap to turn it out. <laughs> Otherwise I just keep merrily sewing and then end up having to unpick it all. Okay, so there we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, going to sew all the way around. Now my um, badly cut uh, interfacing has fallen a bit short so I'm going to have to sew quite a deep uh, seam allowance to make sure I catch that but that's okay it's flexible enough that I can do that and I can either choose to catch the tabs of the zip and sew them or miss them uh, either way will look quite good I prefer to miss them if I can but let's see how this is going to work out I've got a feeling it's going to be quite a wonky dodgy bag <laughs> Now I have no idea how this is going to turn out, but I'm just going to very uh, slightly nip the corners off. Because I haven't boxed the bottoms, this will just help it hopefully to turn out quite nicely in the corners. I'm also just going to trim some of that excess seam allowance off, because I did it a bit wider than I was originally intending. Okay, so remember you left that zip open, so we're going to turn it out through the lining like that it is exciting even though I know it's going to be a bit of a disaster this one and then you'll see that you've got the opening in the zip that's the iron angrily beeping at me to tell me it's still on and not being used and then I'm going to get my hand into that hole in the lining to push out the corners. You could use a chopstick or the end of a the blunt end of a knife to poke out those corners. Or a pencil. I'm just using my finger. There we go. So if you can see here the little tabs that we did Let's make things a bit more interesting and neat than just the raw um, zip on show. And I really like that. So this just needs a bit of an iron and to close the hole in the lining. To close the hole in the line, I just, lining, I just take it out, give it an iron and just do a really narrow uh, line of stitches using the sewing machine. You can do it by hand as well, whatever you feel like. So that was my second bag that needs a bit of ironing. I'm really pleased with that. It's quite a handy little pouch. Uh, so I'll throw that onto the ironing board and give it an iron a bit later. I've still got a ton of bags obviously to make. It's 10 past two now, so I do need to clean up and get out on the school run. So I will come back in a couple of days time when it's the weekend and hopefully show you the progress I've made on all the other bags I've been showing you and see where we've ended up by the end of Saturday. I'll see you then.
It is Monday now. The weekend has passed us by in a flash and I didn't do any more sewing because we had a bit of a chicken emergency and uh, we have a sick chicken who I'm taking to the vets in about 45 minutes. So it's now Monday and I'm going to finish sewing my bags today. So different nail colour, different outfit, different day. Uh, same sewing machine. <laughs> Uh, right, let's get started, see how much I can, it's half past eight in the morning, so I'm going to see how much I can get done before I have to get uh, Hey Hey the chicken into the pet carrier to get her to the vets, poor thing. So I'll keep you updated on the chicken situation as well as the bag situation. Last time you saw this, I was just sewing the zip, the last bit of the zip in. So I'm ready now to sew it all together. So this is a terrible angle and terrible light. Uh, and then I had to zip off to the vets with Hey Hey, our chicken. I can report that she is on the mend. She's definitely been unwell and had some symptoms, but the vet is very happy with her. So we're just gonna be keeping an eye on her. And she is none the worse for her journey and her ordeal. She had to have her temperature taken. I'll leave that to your imaginations. Uh, so it was very undignified and she's very happy uh, back with her sisters drinking and looking very chickeny, so that's good. I thought I would do top stitching on this. Uh, so you can use top stitching thread, which is a little bit thicker than normal sewing thread, but um, you've guessed it. <laughs> I can't be bothered. So I'm just gonna literally use the white thread that I've, I'm using anyway to sew a very, um, uh, hopefully straight not too wonky we all know it's going to be wonky but very close to the seam here a bit of top stitching just to show you um, what I do and how that looks it just makes a little nice decorative neat finish although in my case it's very rarely neat <laughs> but I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you before I sew this bag together I love this yellow with the black and white love it <laughs> We've got a little line of stitches just really really close to that edge and it just kind of finishes it off so you can see the difference between the side I haven't done and the side I have done. Um, sometimes I just prefer it like this and sometimes it's nice to do this, it's just a finishing touch and obviously you get it on the other side as well on the lining. So I'm going to go ahead and do this other side and then I'm going to sew the bag together. to show you I have just sewn together uh, this next zippered pouch but I've decided last minute that I do want to box the bottom slightly so I've already sewn around the whole outside leaving my gap for the lining and I'm just going to cut my squares now again I'm going to measure from the point of my stitches and I only want it to be really small so I'm just going to do I think two centimeters or three Let's meet in the middle at two and a half, two and a half centimetres from the point of my stitches. I'm going to measure that onto each corner and then cut them out and I'm going to box them in the way I showed you earlier.
we have two zippered box bottom bags, this one and this one. We have my drawstring bag that still needs drawstrings. We have got three little zippered pouches that aren't box bottomed, which I'm really, really pleased with. And using the ribbon to cover the ends of the zip worked really well. I'm really pleased with that. So I've got my little pouch there and the Christmassy one and the one I did first. And then I put together one of the box pouches that I'd already cut out and then I ironed it and something dripped out the iron. Man. <laughs> But uh, this isn't perfect. In fact, the lining on the inside um, hasn't quite met up, so there's a tiny hole, but who's going to see it? I'm not going to give this to anybody. I will probably use this to keep things in my car or something. It's really cute. I'm really pleased with it. And it makes me want to watch some, make some more of these um, box pouches because they are really useful, uh, but perhaps in a bit of a better way than the way I've done this one. And there you have it. That's over, well, two days, spread out over about four days. All in all, probably, I don't know, about six hours. Um, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little bags. So that is brilliant. I've still got lots I want to make. And I've had lots going on as well. Obviously sick chickens, kids doing exams, running here and everywhere, taking kids to clubs and just general family life. And I've still managed to do that. And it's been really good fun. I've been listening to my audiobook all the times that I haven't been talking to you. And yeah, I feel really proud of myself because I've got all of these now that I can give as gifts. Well, apart from the really dodgy ones. Yeah, so give it a go. I will link underneath in the description box all of my bag tutorials on this channel. They're all super simple. As you can see, I'm a really, really basic sewer and hopefully you can find something you might enjoy making and let me know if you do and I'll see you again very soon.